Hey everybody, this is Mr. Mazzoro again, and today we're going to break from talking about photosynthesis and talking about what are plants to actually talking about how are plants made up. And As you know, plants are made of cells, they're living organisms, all living organisms are made out of cells, but what I want to focus on is what makes plant cells unique, right? What are plant cells and what makes them unique? What separates a plant cell from an animal cell, for instance? And then we're going to talk about plant organs, right? Like we have organs, hearts, lungs. Plants have organs too. But plant organs aren't the same, don't have the same function as our organs. And so what are plant organs and what is their function? Last, we're going to talk about tissues inside each plant organ. And we're going to talk about, after we get done talking about the plant organs, what those tissues do for the plant or the plant organ specifically. So first, just the general organization of plants one more time. Cells, smallest level of organization of all living things. They're the smallest unit of living life. Any organism is made out of cells. Bacteria, plants, animals, they're all made out of cells. You take those cells, you put them together. What you get is a tissue, a group of cells working together. Now for us, we have nervous tissue in our brain or cardiac tissue in our heart. A group of cells working together to make our heart work. A group of cells working together to make our brain work. Plants don't have hearts, they don't have brains. Their tissues are called vascular, ground, dermal, and then meristem tissue. Lastly, if you take that vascular, ground, dermal, and meristem tissue and you cram it together, what you get is an organ. A group of tissues working together to perform a function. Vascular ground, dermal, and meristem tissue crammed together in the ground makes up the plant organ roots. Vascular ground, dermal, and meristem tissue crammed together in the stem part of a plant makes together the stem. And vascular ground, dermal, and meristem tissue crammed together in the broad parts of an extension of a plant above the ground makes up the leaves. That vascular ground, dermal, and meristem tissue is made out of plant cells. So, what are those plant cells? Well, if you look, plant cells on the left are actually pretty similar to animal cells on the right. There's really only three parts of a plant cell that separate them from animal cells. Vacuoles, chloroplasts, and cell walls. And since those are the three things that make plant cells unique, and we're talking about plants, let's focus on them. So, what do those vacuoles, chloroplasts, and cell walls do? Well, vacuoles are organelles inside of a plant that store food, in this case starch, glucose, as well as water. Vacuoles just hold on to that food and water. Anytime a plant makes starch or glucose in photosynthesis and it doesn't use that food immediately, it stores it in its vacuole. Next, chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are the organelle that allows a plant to photosynthesize. All plant cells have chloroplasts, but certainly leaves have more chloroplasts than, let's say, stems, which don't have very many at all. Lastly, you get cell walls. Plant organelles that surround every cell and protect it. And these cell walls are usually so thick that they actually provide some support to the cells as well. If you really look at vacuoles, chloroplasts, and cell walls, what you begin to realize is that, yeah, all cells have this, but certain parts of a plant would probably have more of one of these particular types of organelles. For instance, right? Vacuoles. Storage, storages of sugar. Well, where does a plant store food, store sugar? Well, it's roots. So plant roots probably have lots of big vacuoles. That's true. Chloroplasts, organelles that perform photosynthesis. Well, what part of a plant photosynthesizes? It's leaves. Well, that would mean its leaves probably have lots of chloroplasts to them. Now, chloroplasts, like I said, are also in the stems and in some cases in the roots, but certainly they're mostly in the leaves. Cell walls. 
Cell walls surround, they protect the cells, so protection and support. What part of a plant supports the leaves and protect and provides some protection? Well, that would be the stems. The stems probably have pretty dominant cell walls. So you can actually look at these organelles and start deriving certain, certain ideas about plant organs that they're in. So the three plant organs, right? What are they? Well, roots are the plant organ that absorbs and stores water and nutrients. That's what roots do. They absorb water and nutrients. This is a huge misconception for most people. Most people, when they water plants in the spring or water plants in the summer, they spray their leaves, thinking that the leaves are withering, they're drying up. You'll spray some water on the leaves and the leaves will absorb that water. That's not true. Roots are the only part of a plant that absorbs water. No moisture can ever touch a leaf ever. And as long as the roots are, remain damp and the soil remains wet, the plant will live fine. In the greenhouse, in fact, we don't even water big plants, the big show plants that we have. We don't water them with their leaves. We just have little drippers on their roots, and they drip in water on the roots, and those leaves never have any moisture on them whatsoever. Next are stems. Stems are very misunderstood. A lot of people will tell you that stems are there to transfer water and nutrients from the leaves to the roots or from the roots to the leaves. Well, the reality is a plant doesn't need to create a vessel of transport between two things, right? It doesn't it, it doesn't need to just transport water and nutrients from one thing to another. It can just stick those two things together. Really what stems do is they support the leaves. If plants didn't have stems, they would look like a pile of leaves in the fall. And if you think about that pile of leaves, or if you think about when you were a kid and you played in them, right? As soon as you jumped in those leaves and got right below the surface, it was completely dark. Only the top layer of those leaves ever get any light for photosynthesis, what plants need for the light reaction. Stems spread out the leaves, so every leaf has the ability to get light, and every leaf has the ability to photosynthesize. More photosynthesis, more food, more light reaction, better. Roots absorb and store the water and nutrients, nutrients specifically made by the leaves that are spread out and supported by the stem. There are two types of stems. There are woody stems, think of trees or roses. And there are also plants that have herbaceous stems, stems that aren't made out of wood. And for lack of a better way of putting it, they're made out of plant material. Think about tulips or think about daisies or really most flowers, actually. Those stems aren't made out of wood. They're made out of kind of that plant stuff. Lastly, we have leaves. Leaves perform photosynthesis. So if you put it together, photosynthesis happens in the leaf, and specifically all leaves, because they're spread out and supported by the stem. And once it's done, you generate nutrients that you pump down and store in the roots for winter. Those roots absorb water and pump them up to the leaves for the light reaction of photosynthesis. Roots, stems, and leaves are all made out of plant cells, of course, but those plant cells actually come together and perform specific functions, and that's where you get tissues. Inside every leaf, stem, and root, there are three plant tissues. Dermal tissue, which you see here on the outside or the brown portion of each root, stem, or leaf. Vascular tissue, which is the red and yellow parts of the leaf, stem, and root. And ground tissue, which is kind of everything in between. Every plant organ, every root, stem, and leaf has all three. Dermal tissue is always on the outside. Vascular tissue is always in these little bundles throughout. And ground tissue is always in between the dermal and vascular. It's really everything else that's there. What does the dermal tissue do? Well, regardless of whether it's on the leaf, the stem, or the root, dermal tissue is always on the very outside of a plant, and it's always there to protect the plant. Dermal tissue always on the outside, always protects. So as soon as I show you a picture of a leaf, stem, or root, and I point to the outer portion of it, automatically dermal tissue. Vascular tissue. 
Vascular tissue is these yellow and red sections of the leaf, stem, and root. Vascular tissue moves water and nutrient through the plant. It moves water from the roots to the leaves so that the leaves can use that water, break it apart in the light reaction, use it for photosynthesis. And then it takes the sugar generated from the photosynthesis and that vascular tissue moves that sugar from the leaf to the root for storage. Specifically, it does that separately. Xylem cells are cells inside root stems and leaves that move water. They're vascular tissue cells that move just water, water specifically from the root to the leaf. And phloem are cells in vascular tissue that move water, that move nutrients, are sugar, usually from the leaf to the root. Or let's say it's winter and a plant needs to use its storages of sugar in its roots to actually generate leaves to photosynthesize for the spring and fall, spring and summer. Well, in that case, the phloem is going to move the nutrients stored in the roots up. So phloem actually moves nutrients both directions. Xylem always moves water from the roots to the leaves. It's really, really, really important to understand that xylem and phloem just move water and nutrient. They do not absorb water and nutrients. Xylem and phloem move it. They don't absorb it. Why? Well, there's xylem and phloem in leaves, but leaves don't absorb water and nutrients. Roots absorb water and nutrients. There's xylem and phloem in stems, but stems don't absorb water and nutrients. Parts of the roots are what absorbs those water and nutrients. So xylem and phloem are just like veins in your body. They're just vessels. They just pump blood, and in this case not blood, but water and nutrients throughout the plant. They have nothing to do with your digestive system, which absorbs it. That's a different thing. Last but not least, you have ground tissue. And this is really the hardest to understand because it's probably the worst name. When you think of ground tissue, when you think of a plant, you think of, okay, ground, ground means like dirt, like it's in the ground. And that's totally wrong way of thinking about it. What ground tissue is, is, is first of all, it's not just in the roots, not just in the dirt. It's also in the stems and the leaves. And ground tissue changes depending on what organ you're talking about. Really, what is meant by ground tissue is base tissue, just kind of everything that's not dermal tissue on the outside or vascular tissue that's moving water and nutrient inside every plant organ. And it changes. It changes function depending on what organ you're in. For instance, the ground tissue in roots has large vacuoles because those vacuoles are the organelles that store water and nutrients and roots absorb and store water and nutrients. Ground tissue and stems don't have large vacuoles. Instead, they have these thick cell walls that surround them. And that's because ground tissue in the stems helps support the stem, helps support the plant, specifically the leaves. Ground tissue in the leaves have cells with lots and lots of chloroplasts. And that's because ground tissue in the leaves needs to help the leaves photosynthesize. Vascular tissue always moves water and nutrient regardless of whether you're talking about a root stem or leaf. Dermal tissue always protects the outside of a plant regardless of whether you're talking about the root stem or leaf. Ground tissue changes its function depending on whether you're talking about root stems and leaf. Ground tissue in the roots absorbs and stores water and nutrients. In the stem, it helps support the plant with thick cell walls. And in the leaves, it helps with photosynthesis. Meristem tissue is the last type of tissue, and all meristem tissue is is in the tips of plants and the tips of roots, and it helps plants grow. If you'll note, you know, plants usually grow up or down into the soil, and meristem tissue is the growth tissue that allows them to do that. So that's that. Those are plant cells, vacuoles, chloroplasts, and cell walls is what makes plant cells unique. You put those cells together, you get roots, stems, and leaves. Roots absorb and store water and nutrients. Stems support the plant. Leaves help with photosynthesis. How? Well, leaves and stems and roots have dermal tissue, vascular tissue, and ground tissue. Dermal tissue always on the outside, always protects. Vascular tissue always moves water and nutrients, but ground tissue changes depending on what organ you're talking about. In the leaves, it helps with photosynthesis. 
In the roots, it helps with absorb and, absorb and storing water and nutrients. And in the stems, ground tissue helps support the, support the leaves. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. That's it.